Traps in Dungeons & Dragons are a difficult encounter for most dungeon masters to use in their games. Use one in the first dungeon your players delve into, and there's a chance that they'll become paranoid about every dungeon they'll ever visit, ever. And rightly so. Dungeons are supposed to be dangerous places, and traps are one way to make the environment you're in feel just as hostile as that group of ravaging hellhounds you're going to fight. But used incorrectly, they can stop all momentum a game is going and act as more of an annoyance than an obstacle to overcome. Hey folks, my name's Garav, and on this episode of Tactical Studies, I want to discuss traps in 5th edition and how to build better ones using a supplement known as the Trap Compendium. Let's do it! Let's play out a scenario involving a trap using an official D&D adventure, The Lost Minds of Fandelver. Your party is in a dungeon, and they reach a narrow corridor. Moving silently, you traverse the hallway, until the floor gives way underneath you. The two members in the front who sprung the trap fail their dexterity saves to grab the ledge and fall to the bottom of a 20-foot pit, taking 2d6 damage each. Now that's a pretty basic trap, and it's not hard to get past once you've sprung it. They either climb out using some athletics checks, or your other party members throw down a rope for them to climb. Flavor-wise, it's kind of boring, and it didn't really accomplish anything. The party took some damage and stopped moving for a couple minutes. But beyond that, they were fine. They didn't get any experience for overcoming the trap or any insight as to why it was even put there in the first place. Afterwards, the party decides that they'll be more careful from now on and start searching for traps. But this means that your game is slowed to a halt at every door, hallway, room, and treasure chest because they're making a check each time to make sure that they don't get screwed again. Which isn't that fun for you or them. So what's to be done? How can you deploy traps in your dungeon to make them feel fair and balanced, as well as interesting and fun for your players? Well, first, you may want to drop a few subtle hints that warn the party about impending danger. Maybe just before they step on the trap, you inform the player with the highest passive perception mm -hmm. that there's a strange symbol on the wall. That alone might be enough for them to look at their surroundings and make a perception check. If they roll high enough, let them know that there's a trap right in front of them and let them deal with it accordingly. But if they choose to just continue moving forward or don't roll high enough, then go ahead and spring the trap. Doing it this way gives them a little bit of a clue that something is kind of off here. And if they choose to ignore it, then well, that's their downfall. They'll hopefully connect that the trap and the symbol are somehow related to each other and use that knowledge moving forward. There are other ways to do this using different environments, too. You could point out scorch marks on a wall that allude to some sort of fire trap. The players could find small holes on the floor where darts shoot up to poison them. You don't have to warn them every time with this method, but it will help the players trust you a bit more, as well as avoid sporadic perception checks. Now that you have some sort of warning system for traps, you should take them to the next level. Make them worthy of being placed in your dungeon. And that's where the Trap Compendium comes in. In this book, they teach you how to make incredible traps that enhance the game instead of slowing it down. It contains a whopping 70 pages of trap-filled goodness. There's also 50 pre-built traps for you to use right out of the book. If you're interested in building your own custom trap, there's a complete step-by-step -step guide that you can follow to do so. First, you'll identify the cost of the trap you'd like to create based on the trap budget table. Each trap you build is given an allotment of points based on the average level of your PCs. And that's one of the best things about this compendium. It's balanced for your players. That's important because you don't want to blindside your level 2 players with a trap room that has walls shooting arrows and the floor spouting fire and the ceiling begins closing in on them. You want to challenge them with traps that cause them to sweat, but they are capable of overcoming. Second, you'll determine how difficult it is to detect and disarm the trap. If you want to surprise your players, you can make your trap a little harder to find by spending two points to get the hard to find upgrade, which increases the perception DC to detect that trap by three. Third, you'll choose one or more triggers for the trap and consider their location. Is the trap activated by a pressure plate in a narrow hallway? Is it a tripwire in a door frame? Or does a wily kobold flip a lever when the PCs are crossing a bridge? Choose one or more of these, and then you can decide if you want to upgrade the triggers to cover a large area or maybe be magical instead of physical. Fourth, you'll choose one or more targets or target areas for the trap. Does it just hit the character that triggered it, or does it hit the entire hallway behind them? Finally, you'll want to decide on the components of the trap, which will shape and alter how it ultimately works in the game. These are the literal nuts and bolts of your custom traps, and can enhance them in many different ways. For example, you could add the anti-magic component, which will cast dispel magic to any triggering creatures and make any effects, such as invisibility or silence, end immediately. 
And because these traps are a little more souped up than your regular everyday traps, they award XP to the players for getting through them. One of my favorite traps in the book is called Safe Haven, and it's a twist on the old falling into a pit trap. When this trap is triggered, the floor gives way to a pit below, and then the doors of the pit close shut and lock. Usually when you avoid a pit trap, you're relieved, but not this time. The corridor above the pit trap is filled with flammable gas that chokes any player's caught in it and doesn't allow any verbal spellcasting. To add insult to injury, you can actually upgrade it further to give the pit below a continuous fire element, which means that if the doors above are actually ever opened, the flame will hit the gas and cause a massive explosion. Now, like I said, make sure your traps are budgeted for the power level of your group, because I do not want a trap TPK on my conscience. Although that would be really cool. But don't. Don't do that. That safe haven trap is just one example of the 50 pre-made unique traps that are in this compendium, and I cannot recommend it enough. You can buy it online from 2cgaming.com and use the promo code SAVINGTHROW to get a discount. That code will be good for the next two weeks, so check it out soon if you're interested. That's the show, folks. Thanks for watching. If you guys want to talk about traps or any other D&D related things, hit me up on Twitter. I'm at GXG. If you enjoyed this video, then consider giving it a like and subscribing. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.